Well, one of those MPs backing her is the Conservative MP John Penrose, who joins me outside Parliament. John, good afternoon to you. Good why, afternoon. why is Penny Morden your candidate? Well, I've, I've known her for years, and she is tremendously impressive. She's really good in Parliament in debates. There's a wonderful UQ, YouTube clip circulating, if your viewers want to look at it, of her taking down Angela Rayner at the dispatch box. Does it very well, doesn't get shouty, is calm, cool, but very, very clinical. Um, she's also an original Brexiteer, which doesn't matter quite as much as it used to, but I still think is going to be important this time, not just for Conservatives, but across parts of the country at least. Um, but she's also very determined. She understands that the the country's got a lot of opportunities and has got to go through some changes. Now we are post-pandemic and post-Brexit. She understands that's necessary. We've got to move fast and she wants to get on with it. And for me, those are the crucial things. There's some opportunities which are going begging. She seems to get it. That's the reason why I'm supporting her. Well, so what are the policy kind of platform there? I mean, she kind of talked about almost getting back to basics, if you like, back mm. to basic conservative values in terms of What's it? Low taxation, personal responsibility, smaller... Yeah. So, so I mean, it, was, it was interesting, I thought a good point, which is that the Conservative Party works on values rather than ideology. So there's a whole series of values which you, know, you can trace right back to Disraeli and people like that, but you've got to reinterpret them and apply them to the modern version of you know, the modern problems today. So what she's saying is take those original Conservative values, things like low taxation, personal responsibility, sound money, all those things, um, and then apply them to today's problems, and we can, and if we do that, then we'll come up with answers that work, that make sense, and I think go with the grain of where the British people are. It's so that I was there earlier on today, and she was asked repeatedly this question about whether she was a kind of continuity candidate, if you like, because she kept referring to the fact that she was standing on the 2019 uh, manif oh, manifesto, or the, the, the kind of manifesto that won the election, while at the same time also trying to say that she was new and fresh from Boris Johnson. Yeah. Can you square that circle? I, I, I think I can, because I think what I, mean, I was in the room with you at the time, and I think what she was saying was, look, we were all elected, and um, Boris, me, her, we were all elected on that same manifesto. There's a whole series of things there which I suspect any anybody will want to deliver no matter who wins in this in this election. Um, so that that is our starting point. But there are some things which I think and she thinks can go faster, we can do more of. She's made a couple of announcements so far. So we'll see a few more of those, I think, over the coming days. Um, but the fundamental thing is the reason why people voted Conservative back in 2019 There'll still be, you know, the, the, the levelling up agenda, for example. That's still going to be there, and it's very important that we deliver on some of those promises because that's what people voted for. In saying that, you know, Penny Morden's not a household name. I think that's fair to accept. Many would question, you know, she's not been in, or hadn't been in Cabinet for a very long period of time. Is she experienced to take on this job? Because this job is not, you know, being leader of the opposition. Oh, no, You've got time. You, you are going straight in during a cost of living crisis yeah. to the toughest job in the country. It, it's going to require somebody who's, uh, in the sporting uh, term, got fire in the belly and ice in the head to be able to cope with that. I think she's got that, but she's also got the experience you're talking about. She's been Defence Secretary, for goodness sake, a couple of years ago now, but you know, it's a, it's a job that, uh, if you can do it, it shows. Um, and she's served as a minister in a lot of other departments too, so she's got bags of experience. She's also a Royal Naval Reservist, so she's, she understands public service in a broader context than just in Parliament and just in politics. What would you say though to our viewers, and you know, there are quite a few of them who like Boris Johnson, are not very happy with what's happened to him. Mm. There is the suggestion Penny Morden has been running a kind of campaign behind the scenes for months. Her website was registered two years ago. Well, you know, this is someone who's been very ambitious for a very long period of time. You know, there will be a sense that some of these candidates, maybe even Penny, has been a bit treacherous in the background towards well, Boris. So I, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's possible to argue with one question, and I appreciate you're, you're only asking other people's questions to, 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 get the question, to get the answers. But I don't think it's fair to say, you know, nobody's heard of her, she's not well known, and at the same time say that she's been sort of, you know, treacherously plotting, because otherwise that would have showed. Um, there is a military adage that says, you know, prior preparation and planning prevents poor performance. Um, so it, it clearly makes sense to have thought ahead, um, but she was scrupulously loyal, um, and, uh, and, I, and I think that people understand that. Uh, and just very finally, I know you went there, you saw a little bit of it on the TV, uh, aside from the slightly chaotic scenes at the start, what did you make of, of the Prime Minister's performance uh, today, in the sense that, you know, he was, he, it felt like he was trying to remind people of his successes, but fundamentally it felt in many ways that the party had already moved on from him. Well, and, I th and I think that that's what happens to any Prime Minister, it doesn't matter if it's Boris Johnson, I think the same thing happened to David Cameron and before him to Tony Blair when he was in the transition to handing over to Gordon Brown. 
the, the caravan moves on, and democracy is somewhere where you know, um, attention moves very promptly, and rightly so, to the next thing, the next purpose, the future. Um, and so I don't think it's a particular, you know, um, you know, a particular comment on Boris Johnson that that's happened to him in the same way as it happens almost inevitably to anybody else in that situation too. Okay, John Penrose, as always. Thank you, Thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us live outside Parliament this afternoon. Thank you very much indeed. Uh,